pace down the hall, wanted to see the bulletin board, see if he made the team. When he looked on the board, his name wasn't there. He took another look to see if his name got there, and he couldn't find it anywhere. Who am I talking about? Michael Jordan. Didn't make the basketball team. For the next year, he practiced four to five hours every day. He didn't take the attitude that, hey, it's their fault I didn't make it. He took the attitude that it's my fault and I'm going to do something about it. So this went on for a year, four to five hours a day, sometimes under light, sometimes in the rain. Look what happened to him. Then there was another guy by the name of Ben Hogan. In 1929, I think he was 11 years old at the time, his father committed suicide in front of him. He played golf or actually kept hitting balls because that was the only way he could get rid of everything inside of him. He didn't like to get around people. He was kind of you know, hurt with all this. He did this for until he was 17 years old. In 17, he turned professional. He went out on a professional tour for two years and just couldn't make it. He had to go back to work. But he still had that faith. I'm a great hitter. I know I'm going to make it. He continued practicing, and then he went professional again. This time he met his wife, Valerie. And one of the things they used to do back in those days is follow the sun. They didn't have airplanes. They had to take a car to where they went. So he, that's what he did. He went back on a tour with his wife. It didn't work too well. He had to go back and get a full-time job again. Then in 1940, he won his first professional tournament and did a great job there. Everybody was scared of him, though, because he walked around with his stern eyes. And he always, when he walked, he walked like this, looking at his shoes, and he hardly looked up at you. But when he did, everybody said he has those hog eyes. And so they were kind of, you know, leery of him. Then, unfortunately, on the way back home, from one of the tournaments with his wife. It was a real foggy evening, and this big tractor trailer was passing somebody, and they ran right straight into it. Well, before that happened, he reached over to save his wife, and it saved his life because he did that. The steering wheel ended up in the back seat of the car. He, he, he fractured his collarbone, his ankle, and something uh, in his pelvis. His doctor told him he would never walk again. Eleven months later, he went back on the tour again. And this time, he ended up winning the next 13 tournaments that he was in. He could only play in seven tournaments a year because he hurt so bad. But of those, like I said, he won 13 of them. The next year, he won, uh, he, he was in seven tournaments, I'm sorry, six tournaments, five of which were majors that he won. And then he won three tournaments that were majors in one year. That stood for 50 years until Tiger Woods ended up getting that. They named him the father of modern golf swing. How did he do that? He practiced and practiced. Then there's a gentleman by the name of Ray Kroc. At 52 years of age, he decided it was time to get into the fast food business. So he went out, he went to some investors, went to one, and he said, for $100,000, you can own one-third of my company. His friend said, look, if you don't mind, let me look it over the weekend. And on Monday, I'll give you my answer. Well, on Monday he went in, the guy said, I studied it. I talked to several of my friends. They all said, this is not the right thing for you to do. It's going to never work. Look where McDonald's is today. <laughs> for $100,000. Then there's another gentleman by the name of Tommy Logan. I'm sorry. Uh, Tommy. Jim Brad Braddock, a lot of you have heard of him, he's called the Cinderella Man. He told him about a hard life. This, this guy was 
a professional, uh, light heavyweight champion that he was trying to win. And by the time he started getting into the fights, he ended up smashing his hand, losing to a gentleman who had really studied him. He ended up becoming a worker on the docks, stayed in good shape. The depression started back then. He lost everything during the depression. What had happened to him, he ended up fighting by accident in the heavyweight champion in the world. And he ended up winning. What are all these commonalities we have for all of these? Regardless of what came before or what has yet to come, what matters most now is how I choose to respond to the challenge before me. Will I lie down or will I fight? The choice is mine and I choose to finish strong. 